Hey guys, King Gath here with Bethesda Mod School. In this series of lessons, I am going to start showing you different tips and tricks on how you can reverse engineer either mods or stuff Bethesda has done so that you can learn how to do your own cool stuff in your mods. So this particular lesson is about decompiling scripts, which is something you'll end up wanting to having to do quite a bit once you get into figuring out how the people's mods work. Because even if it's just minimal scripts, like I've shown so far in the papyrus parts of Bethesda Mod School, most things that you do as a modder will involve some little tiny script here and there, uh, eventually once you get into anything complicated. So you're inevitably going to have to read through some scripts. So even if you're not of a programmer, Highly recommend start uh, at least learning the real basics of scripting like I've covered in my my tutorials because there's Papyrus is actually written to be fairly simple. Um, now you'll run into some mods, something, you know, if you start to decompile something like some settlements and look at those scripts, they can get pretty intimidating pretty quick because they're so massive. But a lot of mods will just have little tiny scripts that'll just do something like set stage and things like that. And so it's useful to be able to look at that and know. Now, fortunately, a lot of, of mod authors will actually include their source files, which is great. And it helps people learn it's how, how we grow as a modding community is sharing information with each other. Um, I don't do that personally for some settlements because I'm embarrassed by the code, quite honestly. Uh, but I do with all my newer mods where I feel comfortable in what I've done, like Workshop Framework and Workshop Plus. That code is all up on Git. Other people will actually include their source right inside their main.ba2 file. So that's one thing you can do. If you don't know how to extract files from the BA2, check out my, I believe it's Tools 101. I will confirm that in the description. But uh, I believe Tools 101 video on Bethesda Mod School will show you how to extract BA2 files so you can get access to all those. Um, and so this video, we're going to talk about decompiling. And decompiling is taking the PEX, which are the script files the game uses, and converting them into PSC, which are the text format files that you create when you're creating scripts. So those are the ones that are very human readable, easy, easy to go through. So there's this awesome tool called Champolian PEX to Papyrus Decompiler by Orvid. This is one a lot of us use, and it is awesome for learning. It's a great way to see what the heck a mod author was doing. Now, I will say a couple of things about this because some people are uh, anti-decompiling. I am not. I am actually very, very pro-decompiling, and I'll talk about a couple of things about this. So the first up is if you're going to decompile people's scripts, give the person credit if you learned anything useful for them in your mod. It's a good, it's a nice thing to do. Uh, another thing is don't just use a script verbatim, not because it matters matters if you're you know changing words and such but mostly for the name like just don't reuse the same exact name because uh you're basically setting up a position you're setting yourself up in a position where your mod will conflict directly with the other person's and that's just bad form um as far as ripping chunks of code and reusing them some people are against it i don't care um i think most programmers now Ex are all standing on the shoulders of each other. We're all learning from Stack Overflow, or in the case of Bethesda modding, we're learning from mods of the past or from Bethesda themselves. So I, I find it silly to try and to try and hide knowledge and hoard knowledge like that. Uh, but there are some people who are strictly anti-decompiling, and uh, so just be aware of that, that you might uh, run into people complaining if you're reusing their scripts verbatim. I, it's going to be a tiny minority of the community though, but I just wanted to throw that stuff out there. All right. So for, for this PX decompiler, the first thing you would need to do is have the mod uh, that you want to decompile already extracted those BA2 files. So I have done some of the uh, scripts from some settlements. I've already extracted them here so I can walk you guys through this process. And uh, you would download this, this uh, decompiler here. And uh, I've already done that obviously. And it, uh, it does have a readme that comes in the with the file. It's uh, it's in this doc folder with readme.html, but uh, I don't use any of this stuff. So you can use it from a command line, and uh, I find that too complicated um, and also too slow. So uh, the way I found to use it is I have renamed mine. You can see I added AAA in front of it. And what I like to do is I just make a copy of this exe, and I paste it into the folder I want to uh, decompile. And then I just grab all the PEX files. So I've extracted all of them from this folder from Sim Settlements, and I just drag and drop them onto the XE, and it'll dump out a lot of PSC files. So it's that easy to use. And then you can just open these up and start looking at them. And I'll show you a couple of them because there are some weird things that Champollion does, and it's just based on the way it's uh, part of it is because it's it was written for, for Skyrim scripts, which were had slightly different uh, things going on with them. Uh, Skyrim did not have the same functionality as Fallout 4, so I think it made some it's making some assumptions that don't work correctly. And then it does it it gets a little literal with some of its decompiling, where it makes sense when you see it. What I show you, it makes sense why it does it to me, but it's not necessary. And I just want to point those out to you guys, so if you're learning from the code, you can be aware of that. 
Um, but uh, uh, another thing I want to say before we get into the individual files and talking about them is occasionally you will find one that comes up at zero KB and when you open it, it's just a blank file. There are a couple of reasons that can happen. 99% of the time when that happens, it just means that the coder did something that Champollion doesn't understand. Um, it's, it's pretty rare that uh, that'll happen, but it can on occasion. Um, I can think of, for example, one that comes to mind that I've always tried to decompile to learn from was uh, the transfer settlements hollow tape one, is that I tried to decompile that. It doesn't decompile naturally. I've since become uh, friendly with Cidante and he has given me those scripts voluntarily, which you'll find often if you uh, are a, uh, if you ask a mod author for their source to learn something and you can, you know, you've shown that you are actually a legitimate programmer and not just somebody trying to steal their mod idea. Um, most people are pretty, pretty good about sharing source and information. Uh, but uh, there are a small, tiny subset of users who are so anti, anti decompiling, they have found a way to prevent the uh, Champolian from working on their scripts. I don't know why they have done that, um, but it's actually, there's a way to bypass that. It's pretty advanced. Um, and I might make another tutorial on that in the future because I, I hate knowledge hoarding. I think it's the devil, especially in the coding field where so much of us have learned from each other um, that uh, hoarding, I don't, I just don't understand why people would hoard knowledge like that. But anyway, let's uh, get on to the individual script. So I've got a couple here that will illustrate some specific examples that I wanna talk about here. So um, up at the top here, it shows the information. One, another thing to be wary of and I is uh, I would always delete this stuff, even though it's telling decompiled by Champollion. If you are going to reuse the script, mostly because the username and uh, computer name are legit from that person's computer, and so you could be sharing some private personal information that they maybe don't want shared with the world. So for people who don't, because you know it's a small group of us who will actually use this decompiling, who are going to find this information out. But uh, it's best to make sure you don't keep that in any of the scripts that you release. Uh, the next thing to talk about are um, structs. So structs are a special type where you can basically, and this is a little more advanced programming stuff, but I'm just letting you guys know. So those of you guys who are kind of get, still just dipping your toes in the water, um, and you, if you are intimidated by this, don't worry about it. I'll cover it eventually in Bethesda Mod School. But um, basically, if you ever see one of these hashtag symbols, uh, the pound sign, whatever you want to call it, in the scripts, it's not going to compile. And basically, you would just convert this to a colon, and that'll fix it. So that is just one of those things, I believe. I don't believe structs were supported in Skyrim. And so the the decompiler that was originally written for Skyrim did not handle them. So it used a, a, a pound sign. And instead, if you just change that to... A colon that'll take care of it. Um, now, some people will recognize that you don't actually need to do this. You don't need to have all this stuff information here, this namespace information, and the script name. You don't need this because this destruct is defined locally. Uh, but because occasionally you, this will have, just as a general catch all, if you just change any of those, you know, if you just did something like every time you decompiled, just did a find replace for this to a colon, that would be good enough. So that would work for. For the use cases, now it at least fix the problems um, with the script when you try to compile it, and it's not a problem to do this. It's just not necessary. So, like in reality, we all all we need is this. But just to make because there will be other times when um, somebody's referencing a structure that's not defined in their script, then you would need this stuff. So if you just, as a general form, just always replace hashtags with colons, that'll cover your bases. So that's one thing to watch for. And that will be in more complex scripts while you're on the channel. This is a pretty simple script, relatively speaking. It just has, but it does use structures. So this is a little, little tiny script that just adds keywords onto things. And it uses this structure in order to allow you to access um, keywords from other mods. So like, I think I think we added this script in so that we could add keywords from DLC without having to depend on those DLC on some settlements. Because as you guys, any of you play some settlements knows I always uh, maintain that some settlements will never require a DLC because I don't want anyone to have to spend extra money to play some settlements. Uh, all right, so then the next one here I wanted to talk about, this is just something that doesn't really break anything, but it's, it's good to know, is uh, you will see a lot of these as throughout the code that it gets decompiled and basically it's doing it's what's called casting um, now casting sometimes is done by the original scripter like this one this I'm certain that I did this I did this uh, this as and the way you can usually tell if uh, the original scripter did it or if the uh, Champollion did it is if it's self as it's almost always Champollion doing it. Um, and basically what it's trying to do, and that's not a hard and fast rule, it's just that's usually the case. Uh, but usually what this casting is doing is it's making sure that whatever this variable is, is the exact type that this uh, function, that the function that does it in is requiring. So in reality, even though if, um, so like see, let's see, self is uh, an alias, a reference alias. So a lot of times, 
Um, and this is actually very weird. I don't know why it would be self as object reference when this is on a actor alias. This is this one is this is probably one that wouldn't recompile correctly. So occasionally you're going to find some also that won't recompile correctly. But uh, generally the idea is is it's trying to make sure whatever this thing is here is the exact type. It's the exact script type that this particular function is required, even though in the game that wouldn't be necessarily so that wouldn't be necessary so this might have been a bad example because um, these I don't even know that this would work but uh, anyway generally this casting stuff is not necessary so if you were reusing it you could off you could usually delete this not all the time though so you could try deleting it or you could just leave it it's not going to hurt anything to be in there but I just wanted to point that out that that's going to be one of the differences between the actual script that the original author wrote and the one that's going to come out of Champollion and then the last and biggest problem with decompiling that I I want to cover here is the lack of comments so if you are a programmer you might be uh some of you will be appalled by the lack of comments others of you probably agree with it i've talked to some people who prefer only to put their comments up in the uh in a separate um separate versions of their document not in their release i disagree with that i i am a huge comment nut but um the uh, comments are not stored in the PEX files, and so they cannot show up in the script files that get decompiled. So be aware of that. So the if something is especially confusing in a script or a really long script and you're wondering what the heck that person was thinking, in their version, they probably have a bunch of comments explaining it because they wouldn't remember otherwise. And again, a good reason to reach out to that mod author if you get stuck on trying to understand what the heck is going on. So those are the big things to watch out for. There are a, a couple other little corner cases that can come up. Um, for example, if somebody defines a variable with a lot of uh, ors in it, so if they did or false or true, um, the uh, compiler doesn't know or the decompiler doesn't know how to handle that. And obviously, this, this is a totally invalid. I don't see you think you would ever do something like this, but um, in a a section, well, let me do something that would actually happen. So if somebody did something, I can't, I'm not even thinking of an example here, but if somebody does a bunch of ors together in a setting a variable to it, the uh, compiler does, duck decompiler does not know how to handle that and it, it creates garbage results. So occasionally you will find that if you tried to reuse a script directly, it won't recompile. But my experience is 90% of the time, as soon as you fix these uh, structs, you replace those pound signs with the colon, Everything compiles perfectly is what I find. And then occasionally you have some weird stuff with this uh, as where it's doing weird things that you need to resolve. But most of the time it'll just recompile exactly as is. But I would assume that if you're decompiling, you're not looking to just recompile. You're looking to reuse some of the information. So the best thing to do there is to not just rip the code out directly and instead try and follow along the logic and understand it so that you can add the same functionality to your own scripts is the best way to go about that. So use it as a learning tool, not necessarily a code stealing tool, but you know, if it's something simple, like something like this, if somebody wanted to steal this exactly to do the exact same thing, I mean, there's not a whole lot of other good ways to do this. So like, I personally wouldn't care, go for it. Um, but you know, if you, were to, if you were to steal somebody's, you know, if you were to take, decompile something like some settlements and re-release your own version, you know, I could see myself having an issue with that. Um, and so like, just take it, you know, take it from a perspective of what would you be comfortable with somebody else doing for you? You know, there's a, when it gets the smaller the operation, the more likely it is that there's not a better way to do it anyway. And if you're concerned, if you're worried about uh, how much code you're using of somebody, so them getting upset about it or if it causing conflicts, that's really the big concern. Uh, you know, always just reach out to that author and see see how they feel about it. And I think most of us programmers are pretty pretty open to sharing knowledge. That's how we all that's how we all we learn and expand. So uh, just keep those things in mind. And then uh, as far as beyond the scripts source files, the other thing you might want to be able to check into is the properties that these are pointing to. So you'll often find something like these. You'll have these properties defined. Generally, the actual content of that is defined in the CK and to get access to that you just load up their plugin in the creation kit and you can look at their properties however they're used but I'll show you guys one more thing that is super useful in trying to reverse engineer this type of stuff is uh, the when you're trying to figure out where a script is actually used one of the coolest things you can do is go to this gameplay papyrus script manager search up the actual script and then if you right click it and hit use info while their mod is loaded it'll pop i don't have the mod loaded so it's not going to work right now but it will have a little box up there that will show you all of the different things that are using that script and you can just double click them to open them so it's real quick and easy to learn how they're actually using these scripts inside of their plugin as well so really really powerful feature love this papyrus manager um, i've shown it i'm 99 certain i've shown it in the scripting parts of bethesda mod school but this uh, this ability to right click and hit use info is uh is amazing for trying to reverse engineer stuff so this was the first uh lesson in mind if you guys uh, want to see more from this reverse engineering series i definitely have a couple ideas for a couple more of these 
One of the things I think would be valuable would be to walk through reverse engineering a, one of my smaller mods, something like uh, Salvage Beacons, and show you guys from the perspective, try and do it from the perspective of a newbie. Or I could take, if somebody, if one of you out there is a mod author, has your own small mod, um, that you'd be okay with me reverse engineering on camera. If you want to you know, comment below on that, I'd be happy to do that. And that might be valuable to other people to learn my process for reverse engineering. But otherwise, guys, uh, enjoy decompiling those scripts. And like I said, if you're if you're learning, trying to learn something about how one of my mods works, don't be afraid to ask. I will. I probably would never send you the full source to Sim Settlements, uh, but individual files and telling you how to do individual things, I'd generally be happy to do.